Firstly, we acknowledge the unprecedented uncertainty that you're currently facing right now, both at a professional but also on a personal level. So we wish you all the best through these difficult times. Now for a high level update on the high yield portfolios, looking at beta, we've been relatively cautious on the market and have keep, been keeping the beta of all of our high yield portfolios around the low 90% in terms of beta or our DTS ratio. Generally, what we've been doing is maintaining liquidity within the fund, i.e. higher cash balances than usual, but also looking to reduce some areas of risk in some of those areas of the market we believe to be a little bit more affected. So if we take sectors such as the energy sector and also the gaming sector, those are two areas where we've been looking to reduce a little bit of risk just through this difficult time. Because we have two impacts at the moment. Firstly, we have the coronavirus but we also have the oil price war that's going on as well. So this crisis is slightly different from usual in that we have two relatively exogenous factors that are impacting our market. So what are we watching right now? Well, it's the case with the virus we need to be seeing hopefully a peak in the infection rates, especially in some of the more developed countries. Clearly, we've already started to see that in areas such as China, but I think we're going to need to see that in the broader developed markets and more broadly globally before the market can really get comfortable um, with how the virus is going to pan out before we get into the summer months. It's also the case because the oil price has had such a significant impact on the market. Any recovery in the oil price or a situation that helps out on the price war, that clearly would also be positive. The third factor would probably be valuations. At some stage, there is a chance that outflows could cause valuations to get to such a level that they're pricing in so much of the downside risk. However, we're not quite so sure that's just um, at the current stage. And I guess the final factor is also the steps being taken by the various uh, governments and also the monetary stimulus that's been coming through. That's also potentially an impact. But at the moment, it's going to be tough for those to really grip on the economy, given the social distancing that's going on. But it will certainly have an impact when we start to get through some of the impacts of that social distancing from the virus. So with regard to the outlook, as we say, we remain a little bit cautious. And the one key risk is potentially further outflows. That's why we're maintaining liquidity within the funds, maintaining a higher cash balance, and ensuring where we do have it outflows, that we've been maintaining that diversity within the fund, trading pro rata slices across the portfolios to maintain the same risk levels as before. Now, one thing we absolutely have been doing is maintaining our philosophy that we continue to believe in. This should be a really great time for active managers to really exploit the inefficiencies within the market and also absolutely sticking to our process that has seen us through so many crises in the past. But what are we doing differently? Well, clearly, these are slightly different times. I'm currently doing a video from home for the first time, and we're having to um, use the business continuity and a split site working plan to ensure that we can continue to be as efficient in our business as usual activities as we can possibly be. That's absolutely the case. And through testing of that type of split site working, we've been able to see through this period with people still being able to do their day to day roles and ensuring the portfolio has the appropriate amount of risk. Well, one thing we've been doing is up in communication. It's at times like these actually when more communication is even more important, even despite the challenge of many more conference calls as opposed to day to day meetings. So, for example, our usually monthly um, top-down beta positioning meeting with all of the portfolio managers within the uh, within the corporate credit team. That's usually monthly. We've been having those three times a week to ensure that everyone globally is all tied in, all of the views are together to work out what are those signposts to potentially see a change in the market. That's hugely important right now. And we're also up in the communication between the portfolio managers and analysts as well. And we've had more um, sector reviews, mini sector reviews across a large number of sectors in the recent days and the recent weeks, as we again believe that almost over communication is really important at this time. The other thing that's really important is liquidity. 
And clearly we can fully understand that that's a major concern that clients have at this time. So what are we doing about liquidity? Well, the first point to note is even when we do face outflows, we're ensuring that our portfolios have the same risk profile and we're trading across a large number of line items to maintain liquidity and cash, also diversification, but also those risk levels as well. Also, trading costs have gone up. So we're actually reducing the amount of trading that we're doing to just stick to the really essential trading and maintaining those risk levels as to where we want to be. And to give an example of that, we're trading in smaller size across a larger number of trades. So this has two really key benefits. Firstly, by doing that and trading in smaller size, you get better execution. You're getting better levels to trade at because the cost to trade in larger size is one of the big impacts of the drop in liquidity that we've seen recently. But the other advantage is it also reduces execution risk. And by that, we mean the chance that you hit a price that might not be the best price. And if you did that on one single large trade, that can have a, a potentially negative impact on the portfolio. But where you do it across a larger number of trades across more line items, that risk is diminished as you diversify that potential execution risk. Fallen angel risk has come back on the agenda again as a slowdown in growth potentially could impact in a more systematic way than we've seen in the past, the downgrade of some triple B bonds into the high yield market. One thing we have to consider about this recession is probably likely to be different from ones we've seen in the past, in that actually it potentially could be quite a bit deeper, but it's also gonna be a little, uh, it could also be quite a bit shorter than we've seen for previous recessions. And the reason for that is that this is the virus is a purely exogenous shock. And once it does get through, we believe the bounce back will be quite great. Now, the interesting thing will be is to what extent do the rating agencies give some companies the ability to look through that period and look through that uncertainty before they take that action to downgrade them from investment grade to high yield. But we absolutely acknowledge that this is a risk, especially for areas such as the energy sector within, uh, within the US where there are a, a large proportion of triple Bs that could get downgraded into the high yield market. But again, we often see fallen angels potentially, not all, but some of them as an opportunity to add risk. And the other important factor right now is that the levels of valuation that we're starting to see within the market will mean that some of those fallen angels are going to create really great opportunities to be buying, not just for high yield funds, but also for investment grade funds going forward.